right, on today's iPad painting tutorial, I'm going to paint a snow woodland scene. So as always, I'm using the app Procreate. And if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you don't have to use this app, but if you are using it, then the brushes I'm going to be using are the soft brush, and that's within the airbrushing set of brushes. Don't confuse it with a soft airbrush at the top. It is just called a soft brush. It gets a lot bigger and you can also do it to a finer point or a fine point, just like you can do the top one. It, this one is just a bit more varied, a bit more flexible. And in terms of the colors, I've selected a color swatch, a color palette. If you look down in the description of this video, there is a link to my Patreon page and you can download this color file for free. And within Procreate, I've opened an A4 canvas. And if you do all of those things, then you're gonna be working the same as me and you're good to go. Okay, first thing we're going to do is I'm gonna use this soft brush and I'm gonna turn the size of the brush up to about 15% and the opacity up to about 70%. And I'm just gonna use the first color that I have here on my colors, which is you can see here on the color disc, is somewhere between the green and the blue, and it's a really light version of it. And I'm just gonna take that color across so we're introducing it only really at the top. We're not going to see too much of that color. It's just really in that top section. So I am going over it a little bit and I'm pressing lightly as it goes down further down here. Although I'm gonna go over this with a lighter color now, almost straight away. So the next color I've chosen is this color. It's still kind of in the same region, but it's a little bit more grayed out. Not quite as vibrant as the last color I've just used. So I'll keep the brushes the same and I'm going to introduce that somewhere in the middle of that band. And again, bring that downwards. And then straight away, I'm gonna to go to the lighter of these three first colors. And I'm gonna, again, with the same brush settings. So if you've forgotten what they were, it was 15% on the brush size and 70% on the opacity of the brush. And I'm just gonna introduce this a little bit lower down. You're not gonna see this at the bottom here anyway. So what I'm going to start doing now is pressing on lightly. In fact, I might turn the opacity down for this to around 50% and I'm pressing on a little more lightly and I'm taking this and extending it a little bit further up. So I want to just dilute the impacts of those first two colors. And then I'm bringing it further down here. Now, if you're not convinced that you've done a nice transition there and it's not looking very smooth, all you have to do is go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, move the slider along. You don't have to go very far before it completely blurs out anyway. I would take it to somewhere around 30% and that pretty much does the job. So I'm gonna have that as my first layer. That is the background sky. Everything else is gonna be a lot more foreground. So I'm going to make another layer and it goes on top, so we're on layer two. Before I go any further, if you have a go at doing this tutorial and you're really pleased with the results and want to share the results with me, do make sure to check out my Instagram link and my Facebook group link. They are also down in the description of this video. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna pick this fourth color, color along and you can see here on the color disc, it's between the blue and this kind of purple colors, but it is quite a grayed out version. I'm gonna to go to the opacity and turn it down to around 40%. And I'm also gonna turn the size of the brush down to around 4%. And I'm gonna choose my horizon line. So I'm gonna do it a little bit lower than the halfway point. Now it doesn't matter if it goes a bit wobbly because if I hold it at the other end, you'll see it snap to a straight line. I can just fill in that end like so. And then I'm gonna turn the size of the brush up to about 8% and I'm just gonna start feeding that color upwards. Now, if at a later point in a moment, I decide that that color is a bit too dark and I want to subdue it, then I can easily do that. Very easy to pick a color and I'm thinking it's gonna be perfect and then later you may think it's a bit too saturated, but we'll see. It may well be that this color is absolutely fine. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna turn the size of the brush down and I'm gonna start using the brush start creating some texture at the top. And I think I'll actually reduce the opacity for that. So I'm gonna turn it down to around 20% and I'm just going to blend it in in place. So I'm creating some top areas of the trees here. They're gonna be pretty subdued, so it doesn't matter too much what the texture is like. It just doesn't want to be a flat straight edge really. So I'm imagining the tops of trees, maybe some evergreen trees, though where there perhaps is some foliage and we're getting a slightly irregular top and a canopy of those trees. You could at this point, if you wanted to, try a different brush. I quite like using the Leatherwood brush. You'd have to be really careful to get the settings right. I would, again, reduce it maybe to around 20%, maybe turn the size of the brush up, and you could perhaps use this experiment, create some textures on the top section there. It's really gonna be subdued by other things anyway, so you're not gonna see it too strongly, but it might be a quicker way of creating that texture if you, if you prefer to use this kind of texture brush. Uh, 
Um, I'm going to go back to my airbrush again. I'm going to do this by hand. I'm going to pick out just some of the trees that are poking through at the top and just exaggerate it in certain places because you're going to get layers of trees anyway. So there might be some that are more prominent and then others where it just blends in a little bit more. There's going to be no more texture behind this row of trees. This is the very background feature, apart from the sky, obviously. Not really going to bother with any clouds for the scene, it doesn't really need it. A kind of fade of colours in the sky in the background is perfectly good enough for what we need. On this layer, you could just, as I was saying before, just subdue it slightly. And I think there might be some value in that. I'm going to reduce it to 85%. And I think that it might just work a little bit better. If we decide later on in the tutorial that we want to ramp it back up and make it more saturated again, then when we can do that. Before I create another layer, I'm going to go along to my last colour here. And I'm just going to use that colour at the bottom of this tree colour area. So I'm going to put it at around just into the 4%. I'm still on that low opacity of 20%. And I'm just going to introduce that colour at the bottom of my trees, just so it's not completely flat. It has a bit of a range. And I think that will work a bit more nicely. Okay, I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to move along to my next row of colours. So you'll notice I've got two different colours here. We've got Colours within the yellowy orange area, and but it's quite greyed out, so it gives a real earthy, natural colour. And we've got, again, a greyed out kind of lavender colour, really, or kind of more within the purple. So I'm going to use this colour first. Check on my brush. I'm still on the soft brush. I'm going to reduce the size of that to about 2%. I'm going to increase the opacity to around 30% and see how that looks. So I'm going to start these trees a little bit further down than that horizon line. And I'm going to take them up. Perhaps I'm going to reduce the size of the brush just a little bit. So it's the lower end of 2%. Because even within one of the percentage points, that's still 2% here. And that's still 2%. So I've reduced it down to the lower point of 2%. And I'm going to do some trees that extend both below the horizon line and above the tree canopy of the background by just a small amount for the most part. Some of them can be shorter, some of them can be slightly thicker trunks, especially if they go a bit higher, they probably require a bit more of a sturdy trunk at the base, and then other ones can be slightly smaller. Try to achieve something slightly random so it doesn't look like there's a, a, an obvious pattern to it. Doesn't matter if they lean slightly one way or the other. Again, it, you're going for something that looks natural, so it's going to vary a little bit. If you do them too regimented, then it won't look natural. I try to explain this. Whenever I do something that repeats itself, you don't want it to repeat in exactly the same way. It needs a little bit of variety. So we're going to go to this next colour along, and I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush so that it top end of 1%. So it needs to be a little bit smaller because all we're going to do is we're going to use that slightly more purpley colour, which is pretty much the same colour as the background, just a shade darker. And on one side of the trees, I think the other side actually would work better. I'm going to do shadow on the right hand side of the trees, but not necessarily absolutely all the way from top to bottom. Maybe the shadow would have a slight break in it in places. might be that some of the trees have other trees that go immediately in front of it and it casts more of a shadow on it in certain areas and so you end up with some slightly darker shading on one side of the tree, darker shadows, but just a general effect that there is light within the scene coming from a particular direction and you're getting a bit more shadow on one half of the tree. But again, keep it not too regimented, you want to do approach it in a slightly different way for each tree. So it could be more broken on one or two of them and then more solid on some others. Something like that. I'm going to create another layer. I'll probably go back and do some extra texture on those trees, but I'm still going to move forward anyway. So I'm going to move across to these two colours now. Now it's a slightly more vibrant. Again, it's still within the orange colours, or between the orange and the yellow. But we've moved out of the grey area and we've gone slightly more saturated. So you can see there is a difference in saturation here on the colour swatch. And we've also got, again, within the purple area, it is more squarely within the blue than quite in the purple. And it's a lot darker as well. So with this colour, I'm going to create some trees that are just slightly further down. Now, the more you come down towards you, the viewer, and further down from that horizon point, that's generally speaking going to be because the trees are a little bit closer to you. So you're going to have to show them as bigger, and perhaps they'll extend up into your sky area a little bit more as well. 
Now I'm reluctant to get into too much detail with these trees because many of them are going to be covered by really big foreground trees. So if I spend ages going into the tiniest of details and textures at this point, then I'm going to be reluctant to cover it up with a much bigger item. But it's still useful to get some of them in. They are going a little bit higher. So just like I say, they start lower down because they're closer to you, but they're also going to be taller or appear taller. So they're going to also extend into the sky more too. Again, we will come back to that layer, but we're going to create another layer, go back to our colors. And if we move along, you can see we've got two more colors here. Sorry, these colors. We've used those two, we've used those two, and now we're going to have a go at these two. So this color is definitely more of a green color. When you have objects that get further into the distance, especially in a landscape, you're going to find that the colors will cool off. As a tree that has green on it gets closer to you, you're gonna find it warming up and getting more vibrant and more obviously the color you would expect it to be. So you can see it's heading towards a saturated version of that color now, and it's gonna be a much greener version of what the other trees are. So again, a little bit lower down, and I'm going to make the tree a little bit wider at the base as well. So I'm going to turn the opacity up for this up to about 45%. And we're going to make these trees really nice and big. So they're going to go off the top of the frame, really. And I'm, they're quite untidy the way I'm doing it, but it's fine. We can always tidy up anything that needs tidying up later on in the tutorial. You can also use a combination of the colors. So although I've been using some colors, for the further away trees. It doesn't mean you can't combine them with the colors that you add later on. You don't only have to stick in the background, you can use some of them and put them into these trees as well. So I'm gonna take the, the previous color, which was here, and you can see it's a more orangey version, and I'm gonna combine that with this more green color as well. And the two in combination perhaps will work better than each one individually. So again, I'm going to go to the darker color that's in combination with it. And you can see it's going to be a warmer version of this purple as well. And I'm just going to use it to bring out the shading or the shadow rather on one half of the tree trunk. Now I didn't do that on the previous layer of trees today. That was something I forgot to do. I can go back and do that in a moment, but I'll finish these foreground trees first and then we'll go back and adjust those ones. So we'll go back a layer onto these trees and we'll go back to our color here as well. And we'll use that to add some of the shadows to these trees. I'll probably turn the opacity down for that back to somewhere around 30%, a little too saturated for these particular trees. Like so. So I'm going to create another layer, make sure to put this layer at the top and I'm going to go back to my colors. Now you'll see I've got three more colors here and I'm going to use these colors to do some more kind of feature trees in this area as well. So the first color, I'll turn the opacity back up to around 45% and I'm going to use this color to create a feature tree. So it's going to be a slightly more unusual shape. It's going to stand out a little bit more. Maybe it's a different type of tree that has more branches coming off it. And then I'm going to go to my other colors and I'm going to introduce some of these really lighter tones on here as well. Now remember the light's coming from this side predominantly, so I'm going to apply more of that light color onto that side. Maybe lighten up some of these smaller branches. Again, we're going to add a lot more finer branches and foliage onto certain areas anyway, so that will help it blend in a bit more. I can also use this light color to perhaps just make one or two more of the background trees seem more interesting as well. Maybe add just a hint that there's more going off in this area in terms of other branches and more interest. Now I'm starting to see the overall effect. I think I'm going to go back a few layers. So I've got this first layer of trees. I'm going to go back to that. And the first colors that I was using were these two colors here. So I'm going to go back to this color and I'm just going to start making some more noise in the background really. So I don't want it to be too flat looking. Some branches that just gently come off some of the trees in the background. Maybe add some further up. I'm pressing quite lightly. The opacity is quite high, actually. So I'm going to turn that down. I'm going to move it down to about 25%. But I'm still going to press lightly. I want these to be there, but I don't want them to attract too much attention. It's more about a background texture at this point, really. Now I am confusing the trees up a little bit. I'm adding small branches to any of the trees that happen to be in this area. I'm just adding texture doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to come back to some more of those trees. I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to make sure I put this layer at the top. So it's layer seven. Try and keep them in numerical order so it goes on the very top. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my colours at the bottom. I'm going to select this colour, which is the second in from the right. We're going to turn the op or the size of the brush up to around 4% and the opacity up to about 60%. Now that's going to seem really too strong really initially and that's fine but we're going to adjust it, add things to it and hopefully you'll start to see the point of it a little later on. So we're going to try create a big trunk here. You don't have to copy the shape of the trunks precisely, it could be a little bit different and maybe a, a big trunk here. Again, I, I did say don't be too precious about what you do in the background. It could be that you want to create something and it completely obliterates what you've just done. And then sometimes that's just the way that things develop with a, a piece of artwork. If you did decide that you don't like the placement of it and you wanted to move it slightly so that it allowed for a background feature to be a bit more visible, then you can move it around. You can also make some smaller branches that do grow out from that tree refine the edges a little bit. As branches go further along, they're going to get thinner and thinner. So by all means, add more branches, but just remember as they go along, they should be getting thinner all the time. So you can have some branches that really twist, go into different shapes and different directions. Maybe turn the size of the brush down, turn it down to 2% now. And some of these branches have branches that come off them. I'm releasing the pressure a little bit too. So initially I'm pressing on, but then I'm letting go so that it disappears and it blends with the background a little bit more. So once you've got the overall tree shape, um, I would suggest that you go back to your colours and you've got two different colours here, slight variation, similar-ish, but one's more in the orange and one's more slightly more towards the yellow. But the one that's slightly more towards the yellow, because it is a greyed out version, it gives the general appearance of being slightly more green. Now, with this, I would stick to the airbrush that we've been using for everything. Keep it at maybe at the top end of 2%, maybe turn the opacity down to about 40%. And what I recommend doing is just starting to add a hint of broken texture in there. Now, you can use this texture to suggest shapes and directions of, of the bark. Maybe turn it down even more so you're at the lower end of 2%. And you can use this to really help describe the shape of your tree. So you're going to have textures that all bunch together and maybe see that the pit to go around it. There might be a point like here where the textures seem to break apart and you almost have a split in the trunk of the tree. Some bits you can just join it all up and then perhaps with the other colour, depending on which one you've just used, I've forgotten now, I think I've used the one that was on the right hand side. I'm going to go for this colour now. It's a slightly lighter colour. And remember, we're having light coming from this direction, roughly speaking. So with a slightly lighter colour, you may wish to add more of it onto this side of the tree too. But we also have a really dark colour here. It's pretty much black. And we're going to use this very sparingly because it will easily dominate. So we're not changing the settings. We've got it on the low 2% and still around the 40%. And in fact, we could even do the for lower than 40%, maybe about 25%. And I'm just going to gradually start adding maybe a shadow, some shading onto this side of the tree, because again, the light's coming from over here. Therefore, you're going to get more shading on this part of it. But you might have some of the bark where it has deep recesses and therefore the light doesn't get into that area so you're going to see a real dark tone there. So anywhere you have a split in the tree for example you're not going to get as much light getting into that part. So it may be that there are whole parts of the tree that are casting shadow onto other parts. So because this branch may start to be almost growing from around the back, this part of it is actually creating a shadow on that section of it. So you can add a real dark bit onto this part. And the same could be happening for this section of it. So it could be that this part is actually creating a shadow on this part. And this part of this branch doesn't get a lot of sunlight or this one. It might be there are branches that are higher up and they are casting some kind of shadow across the tree.
And again, we can add more shadows because there's going to be a lot more branches a little higher up here. So not branches you can see, but it doesn't matter. You're going to see the impact that they have on the shadows that they cast on the rest of the tree. So sometimes it's the things that you can't see that have the most dramatic effect on the way that everything else looks. Again, we can go back to our colors and in between where the shadows are, because whenever you have a real strong shadow, it's because you've got a lot of light hitting that area in general. So wherever there's a strong shadow, there's probably gonna be a strong light area to contrast with it too. Looking at our colors, at any time we can borrow from the colors above as well. So I might use this color, even though it's far too light and turn the opacity really down to around 5% and I can just carefully start to introduce that into the textures. I might even be a bit braver and turn it back up to about 10%. Maybe turn the size of the brush down to the top end of 1% and I can use this now maybe in like dashes, really broken texture so it doesn't dominate and add to the noise, add to the texture of that tree. I can use that texture all the way along this branch. It's a particularly big branch that comes off it. These other colors are gonna work really well. So if I'm using those other colors, I'd probably turn the opacity up a bit more. Go back to my light color, try it out at the stronger opacity. It's probably gonna be a bit too strong at that 45%, but depends. If you press really lightly, it might create the, the effect you want. You just have to use it in a different way. If you use it more saturated, I would generally say, press on a bit more lightly and you'll find the right balance. So along this edge, I'm really putting a lot of the highlight along that edge. It's okay to have a dark edge here, but it also means that probably you're not going to have as dark an edge on the other side as a result. I might turn the opacity down a little bit, actually, more like around 20%. So I'm going to be using this lighter colour just to add some more broken texture. Go back to your other colours. Keep varying it up. The more you vary the, the dip between those few colours, the more interesting and kind of more believable the texture is going to be. I'm just turning the opacity up a little bit. I want to extend the base of this tree trunk into the snow. Maybe extend it here a little bit as well. Go back up here, add some of the colour into this area. I feel like I'm going to add more shadows and more highlights as I go along. I may decide that some of these shadows are a little bit too strong and I want to break them up a little bit with some more of these light colours. Just chip away at them. Go back to this brown colour. Maybe that black was a little bit too dark, so I'm just subduing it slightly with this more brown colour. You have to make these judgments. Sometimes you add something and it looks fine initially, but then the more you look at it, it looks like it's just overwhelming and too powerful colour or too high impact. Okay, I'm going to come back to that tree. I feel like I need to keep moving forward. So I'm going to create another layer and on this layer I'm going to do another tree. So I'm going to turn the size of the brush up to about 4% and have the opacity at about 60% like I did before and I'm just going to add another tree in. So I'm going to lean this off slightly. In fact I may add a couple of trees. So one here but it's not going to come as far down so it's not going to be quite as big or as close to us and then maybe another one here as well to accompany it. I'm going to do some branches coming off this tree. Again, they should get thinner as they go along. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time refining these trees, smarten up the edges. I'm going to do the exact same process that I did on that tree and use the same colours. So if I go along my colours now, I've got these colours here and probably some of the highlights of those colours as well. So I'll start with this colour again. Perhaps turn the opacity down to around 40%. I'm keeping it really loose, broken texture for there and there. I can go again to my darker colors. I might actually go for this color here. So I'm still in the second row. I'm going to go for this purple color. And rather than the black there, I'm going to use this purple because it's slightly further away. So I'm going to just experiment, try this purple color for the dark side of the tree and see how that looks. So just like I added some shadow on this branch, I'm going to try the same here, but with the purple. Maybe turn the size of the brush down a little bit so I can be more precise. Maybe I have some more branches coming off too. Again, we've got branches coming up from the top, so maybe they are casting shadows. Maybe the branches that I have here are actually creating shadows off themselves.
And I'll do the same again for this other tree. Okay, um, I'm going to come back to the trees. I'm not happy with the way they are for now, but I will come back to them. So I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to start looking at my colours and I think that I really want to focus in on trying to create a snow effect at this point. So on my new layer, I'm actually going to put it behind all of my trees. So it's going to go even behind the background trees that I did earlier on. The first colour I'm going to use is the second colour in actually, not the first one. The first one is for the real highlights. This first colour represents the colour that I want a general background colour to be. Now I've not got it on 100% opacity. I just want to be a little bit back from there. So you see I've got it on the 60%. I'm going to turn the size of the brush down and I'm just going to use this as an opportunity now just to add a bit more noise, a bit more texture generally into the scene. Keep it quite scruffy at this point, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is move along my colours to this colour, is the third colour along. I'm going to turn the size of the brush down to around 3%, keep it on the 60% opacity and I'm going to look at the trees that I have I'm going to start creating shadows. So again, the light's coming from this side, so the shadows are going to cast off going in this direction. So that's just for the, the shadows for the few trees that I've got. Now I'll do the same effect, but perhaps keep it a little bit more rough, the trees in the background, so really reduce the size and maybe the shadows are going to be a bit more broken in the background. The snow is not going to be completely flat. If it's completely flat, then it would all go absolutely in the same direction. But some of these perhaps appear on the sides of snow that is undulating and going up and down. So the shadows are going to be more varied too. So you've got lots of branches up here. Maybe some of the branches are casting shadows up here as well so you don't necessarily need to see all of the things that cast a shadow so likewise i could do a tree that's over here and you can't see turn the size of the brush up to around four percent but maybe it's still casting shadows into the scene and individual branches even but you just can't see what's creating that and that's perfectly fine next thing i'm going to do is looking at my colors i'm going to go along to this lightest of the colors i'm going to turn the size of the brush down to around two percent and i'm going to just start bringing in some blotches of texture into the lighter parts of the snow i don't want it to look too smooth i need to need it to look more textured especially in those lighter parts i would avoid putting this in the shadowed areas i would just concentrate on putting it in the lighter parts Now we could create some kind of a trench in here, so maybe something's been dragged through the snow maybe, um, in which case we could create a trench that cuts through in areas, maybe not through the shadow actually, maybe more, like I say, concentrated in the areas where the shadow doesn't dominate quite as much. And we can go back to our dark colour here as well, and maybe have, oh sorry we didn't use that one did we, the one before that, which was this one, and we can create a shadow on this half, and then lighter on the other bit that is pointed towards the actual light source. Now, whenever you've got a light feature of texture, again, just like we've done here, you might do shadow on one side, and it's like a dimple, like a, a recess in the snow. So it casts a shadow slightly into that sunken area. So maybe snow has fallen down from a tree branch and actually landed in the snow and created a, a recession there. And you can alternate between those two colours, so if it's got a shadow on one side, it's going to have a lighter bit on the other side. So you can really play around with that effect. Now within the shadows, you could try perhaps a darker colour. And if you turn the opacity down to around 20%, maybe in the shadows, you could even have some more texture in there as well. So it doesn't look completely flat. And then maybe within the snowy areas, you have some pebbles and rocks and other things that may have fallen down. So I'm going to use this brown colour that was down here and turn it up to 60% again. Turn the size of the brush down to about the top end of 1% or the beginning of 2% and just start adding some brown features, little specks. You don't need to go overboard with this, just add a few. So maybe there's a couple of branches that are growing out from the ground, even from a tree near the base. Just so the snow doesn't look absolutely pristine, maybe turn the opacity down, maybe that's a bit too strong. You can do it a bit more subtly, so turn it down to in the 25% roughly, and press lightly as well, create some noise within the snow, just so it's not completely pristine looking. 
Here's some branches that are just randomly sticking up from the ground here and there. Okay, I think we should really add some snow to some of the branches because we've got snow on the ground. I think it's probably sensible if we add some snow to the branches. So I'm gonna add another layer. I'm gonna put this on the top of all of the trees. So right at the top, we've got layer 10 all the way up there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding some snow, perhaps turn the opacity up to 60% again. Add some snow onto some of the branches like this. Maybe it could be broken snow at the base of the tree as well. So you get a smattering of snow breaking up the texture here at the bottom. So it's at this point where you start adding snow onto some of these features that it starts bringing the, the background and the tree features more together and it starts integrating the two things together better. As well as that general color, you can go to your slightly darker blue, maybe create shadows on the tree. Maybe that's not even darker. Maybe go to this blue. And on the underside of the snow, you can add that darker blue. And maybe on the top side of the snow, you can add a white. And you're creating a real variation of the types of white then. And because it, whenever it creates like a really large clump of snow, it's probably going to cast a shadow all of its own as well. alternate between these different types of bluey white. If you find that you're adding snow to an area and it looks too similar to the background, then perhaps go for the lighter color. Sometimes you can try a color for a feature and it just doesn't make it stand out well enough. So perhaps you need to add a more exaggerated version because it is a painting at the end of the day. And if you want something to stand out, then you sometimes have to force the colors and the contrast to really make something look how you want it to look. Even if you had a photograph that you were using as a basis and you were copying from that, there's nothing to stop you adding things to the areas that you want because you think it would suit it and improve the overall look. So alternate between your colours, create shadows. So I'm using this darker blue now to perhaps just focus on the base of my tree and add some slight, even darker shadows around the base of this tree. I feel like I'm still going to need to add more trees to this scene. Then there are some areas where it looks a bit blank and I'm going to fill it in, add more texture. But first of all, I'm going to continue adding these shadows and highlights to the branches to add more snow to the, the trees and the scene. And just having some broken texture here at the base of the tree, just so it doesn't look quite so artificial. It kind of grounds the two things together. It merges them together a little bit better, I think. I'm gonna go back to my tree layer here. I've got one here and I've got one here. It doesn't really matter which I do it on. I'm gonna pick layer seven where I had this main tree. And I feel like I want to add another tree slightly behind it. I think I might avoid that brownie color. I think I'll go straight for these two colors here. And I just want to add a nice tree into this area. Go back to the purple and the blue colours here to add shadow onto one side of the tree. I don't want to use the black too much. I think because it's slightly more distanced or in the distance, I think the, the shading is going to be more blue than it is black. So I've used the real black colours here. For any shadows that appear on these trees, they're going to be a slightly more blued out version of it. Or purple as well is fine. As long as it's slightly more subdued, either one. Of course, any tree that I might add for the background also needs a shadow. So if I want to start adding shadows, I can I can start to place it immediately on any of the layers that I'm working on. But just for the sake of consistency and where the shadows are, I'll go back to that snow layer and we'll use one of these two blues, perhaps that one initially, and we'll add a shadow for these particular trees. Maybe try the even darker one just to really drive home that idea. Otherwise, it's easy to perhaps not notice a shadow at times. So we're just slightly exaggerating. That might be a little bit too much. In fact, turn it down. If you want to exaggerate some of the shadows and some of these ones closer to as well, then you can use this darker blue to do so. Go back to my tree layer again. I'm going to try a few more trees too. So again, using these two colors, perhaps one that's just going off the edge here. Again, you need to keep alternating the opacity as you go along to suit the different elements. So if I'm creating another tree trunk, I need the opacity a little higher. Perhaps a few more in this area too. And perhaps one a bit more central. 
maybe a few in the central area actually. So if they find there's an area that you're not really happy and you don't feel like it's quite working, then add a few more trees, why not? So again, working with the shadows, this bluey color, turn the size of the brush down, create shadows on one side of the tree more than the other. Again, it could be a broken texture. I'm still working on this layer with the trees. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to continue adding texture. I'm not happy that I'd finished with the texture. Now that I'm getting some more elements, I think perhaps I'll just zoom in a little bit. I try to avoid zooming in too much, but I feel sometimes it is necessary, even within these tutorials where I try not to get into absolute detail. But we're just going to zoom in a little bit, add a bit more texture. So using some of the lighter colors too. You can pick colours from anywhere on your colour palette now at this point. If you find you've got some layers in the background, or like there for example, and you want to add more of them, you can just duplicate the layer, move it around, so I'm going to flip it horizontally like that, and you really can create a lot more without too much you know, effort really. So I'll just remove that layer. You can see I've added quite a lot more noise in the background, and it's a really nice fix for creating a slightly busier area. And you can do that for another layer too. So I'm going to dupli duplicate that, perhaps shift it around a bit. One thing that I will say actually is if you do duplicate it and flip it, obviously the shadow was moved to the other side. So you might just have to do some minor adjustments here and there if that's affected it adversely. I'm just going to move it over to this section over there. So I'm going to go to the top layer here. So it was the top layer of the background trees just before we had the foreground trees. So I'm going to go into this layer six and I'm going to go along my branch colors. I'm going to pick this third color along and I'm going to use this now with a smallish brush so maybe just at the top end of 1% and turn it down to around 40% opacity. And I'm going to use it just to start adding some more branches, some more noise in the background. So anywhere where I think there's too much sky showing through and it just looks like there should be more branches in that background. I'm just going to use this time for the next minute or two just to add some more branches so it breaks up some of the sky that's showing a bit too much. Next thing I can do on these top layers is add more of the branches there too. So if you remember that some of the branch colors we were using at the top, I'm going to go for that brown color. I'm going to have it splitting off more of these branches because that will add more noise to the scene as well. Have them splitting off and splitting off again. I'm going to go to my shadow color. I'm going to pick this lighter of the purples, actually. It was a color I initially used for the background trees, but I think for some of these middle distance trees, I think it would be a really useful shadowy color without being too powerful. And it's just going to help me add some more shadows and texture on some, some of these tree trunks without being overpowering, and without bringing them too far forward into the scene. Do make sure for every single tree, if we go back to layer nine, which was our snow layer, that you're adding a shadow for each and every one of those trees. So it, it, any of them that don't have a shadow is gonna look really strange. So you must ground them by giving them a shadow of their own. If they're strong enough to feature in your scene, then they definitely deserve a shadow of their own. As I said before, if you have some features that are not quite in the scene doesn't mean they're not going to be powerful enough to have their own shadow so include those as well if you have a shadow that goes into a trench it's going to actually move with it so it go down into the trench and then up the bank and then flatten out again like that or if you have a bigger shadow here for example let's make a bigger shadow like this, it would reach that point, it would go down and then up and then flatten out like that, for example. I'm going to go to te layer 10 where all the snow was and we're going to continue to add some of that to the base of our tree. So perhaps turn the size of the brush down to 1%, keep it at 60%, why not? And really add some more texture onto some of these distant trees where the snow is really clinging to it in areas. Again, alternate between the blues 
and the pale colour. I think the blue would be a really good colour to use in the background. It's going to be a little bit more subtle. It'll still look like snow, but it won't, it won't jump out quite as much. Again, alternate between your different colours, add some more highlights, add some more textures onto your different trees. I think at this point of the painting, it's more about textures than it is about anything else. So break up your tree trunks with more texture. So you can hear me tapping on the screen, and that is the way that I would recommend you approach it. It's not to keep it as a consistent touching of the glass. I would keep lifting it, tapping the texture onto it. I'm also going to go, as I was before, between these different colours. I'm going for this middle row and this purple, dark purple colour. And I'm going to use it to create some shadows, as I was doing before. But sometimes a shadow on a particular form is just going to really make it work. So it might be that it has a shadow that's been cast from something else nearby, or it might be that you're only seeing the underside of it. So you're, all you're going to see is a shadow on that form. So just like here, that is the underside. It's not having something casting a shadow on it. It's just that all the, the light would be on that top edge and you're seeing mainly the underside of it. So what you do mainly see is its shadow side. Maybe add more shadow onto this part of the tree. I feel like I could really add quite a bit more shadow onto this side, in fact. So I'm just using this, remember which colour I'm on? I think it was this colour, wasn't it? I'm just using this colour. So in combination with the black colour that I was using in areas, I'm using this purple just to bring out some real nice dark tones in the recessed areas. I mean, at this stage in a painting, I can really get carried away with texture and bringing out the subtle details. And I think sometimes this is the point in a painting where it's, it's, it really can come together. Start to really think, well, what could make it better? Maybe a couple more details, a couple more features could really enhance what you've already got. So I'm doing these low-lying branches and I think these are a, a nice detail that is really starting to bring out a little bit more in the scene too. Add a bit more shadow to my tree trunks, especially on this side. So maybe parts of this tree could actually be creating big shadows on this tree further back, perhaps. We see it as it impacts along the ground, but maybe this tree is also casting a shadow on that one. And maybe it's so big a shadow, it even has an impact on the one behind it, like that. And that starts to bring things together a little bit better as well. decided I'm not really happy with this tree trunk, so I'm going to figure out what layer that was on and see if I can remove it. So the great thing about digital is you can go back through the layers, so it's on that layer. I'm going to use my razor and just get rid of that tree. I don't like what it's doing to the scene, so we'll get rid of it completely. And anything I've added on the top layer, I can just erase and it's completely gone now. Not to say I want nothing in that area, but I can choose to put something a little bit different. So maybe I could extend the branch that is coming off here so it's a little bit more similar to that. Maybe even make it more substantial, something like that. Go back to my shadows, exaggerate some of the shadows coming off some more of these trees. Work on some of these little blobs and textures in the foreground. Not entirely sure what they could be, but it doesn't really matter. It just breaks up the, the look of the snow a little bit more. Maybe go to a more earthy colour, mix it in there as well. There's the black, maybe in the distance you could go for it a bluey colour and you could do the same effect but with a, a bluey colour instead. Go back to my highlights, 
especially that white. Maybe I could really just pick out one or two features, check which layer I'm on. I'm on this top snow layer, so it should appear on top of everything else quite happily now, quite easily. Maybe just pick out some of the highlights that cut through everything else, because they are important. So again, it's a, a, also another feature that is about highlighting contrasts. It really can help the drama of a particular scene if you have a slight higher, more dynamic contrast between elements. Go to my lighter colour here, just take the opacity down to around the 20%. Work some of these lighter colours into the texture of various different trees. I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that. Maybe turn the opacity up a little bit up to about 30%, be a bit braver. I'm going to go to my brown colour and just work on some of the, the shadows, especially on this foreground tree. Just stop it being quite so so black, warm it up slightly, maybe add a little bit more here, actually a bit less so for the slightly more distant ones, but certainly for this foreground one, a bit more of the warmer tone will really go a long way. Go back to my second colour here. I'm going to add a little bit more of that colour for the base of the trees, just really bring out some of these background ones a little bit stronger where I think it's required. Maybe create a little bit more of a slightly exaggerated bit of noise and shadow around the base of some of these trees, because whenever you get a base of a tree, you might get, first of all, you might get stuff that's dropped down from the actual tree itself, but you're going to get a concentration of shadow perhaps as well. I think I might just reduce the effects of some of these creases in this particular tree down here. Maybe use the highlight just to pick out the edge of the ones that I do want to keep. Work on my shadow, especially on this main tree, because I want that to really be the most dominant feature in the landscape. So I need to make sure that I get these elements correct for this and for that one too, for that matter. bit more snow just up in spots in areas of the trees. You can go overboard with this, you don't need to do too much, so just elements of it here and there is enough to suggest that your imagination can fill in the blanks. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I could work into it in finer detail, I could spend hours on a piece like this, but I just wanted to get it to the stage where it looked convincing as the overall effect, and I hope that you've learned something by following along or just watching it. Do make sure to subscribe, check out my playlist and the links in my description, and I shall catch you back here again. See you later!